and I don't recommend you visiting it. Because why would you help so much enemy who conquered your people and destroyed your culture? Another house museum a couple of blocks away, which doesn't have any lines. Let me figure it out and I'll let you know. Churros. Berlin. Tacos. But now I know, and you know as well. Hello guys! Today's video is about one of the coolest neighborhoods in Mexico City, Coyoacan. Coyoacan means a place of coyote owners in Nahuatl language. This area has a long history starting at pre-Hispanic age and it always was an important location. Most likely, Aztec gave this name to this area, which was a village on the southern shore of Lake Texcoco that was dominated by Tanapec people. I'm not sure if I need to mention the history, but in a few words, at the location of modern Mexico, there was a big lake Texcoco. Aztecs, according to the legend, left their homeland of Aztlan as a per direction of their god Huitzilopochtli. The god told them to build a new city at the location where they see an eagle on a cactus eating a snake. They saw this exact scene on the island, which was one of the islands at the Lake Texcoco. So they founded Tenochtitlan there and started growing this settlement. Okay, let's get back to Coyoacan. When Cortes and Spanish came here, conquered Tenochtitlan, Cortes needed a place to settle. Locals in the area of Coyoacan supported Cortes, so when Tenochtitlan was in ruins, small village nearby was a great place to settle. In Coyoacan, Cortes resided on lands that belonged to the leader of indigenous of this area, Juan de Guzman Istolinka. I suspect that the first part of his name, Juan de Guzman, was given him by Spanish. And before he was just Istolinka. Cortes built a couple of buildings in Coyoacan, so let's quickly look at them. The first one is the Casa Municipal, also known as La Casa de Cortes, which is located on the north side of Plaza Hidalgo, which is the main square in Coyoacan. The building served as administrative and governmental building since it was constructed. Cortes never lived here, despite a plank on the building that says that he did. There is also Hacienda de Cortes, which right now is a pretty good restaurant, which also claims that Cortes lived here. Again, that's not true. It brings us to Casa Colorada, or Casa de la Malincha. Malinche was an indigenous woman who was Cortez's first interpreter and later his wife. She adopted name Marina, which she was given after her baptism in the Catholic religion. She is considered to be a traitor by many, because why would you help so much enemy who conquered your people and destroyed your culture? So Malinche asked Cortez to build her house in Cuyocan. She wanted it red, with large gardens and very close to a church. This large house with thick walls, beautiful windows and iconic bars was the home to La Malinche and Hernán Cortés for one year from 1521 to 1522. As we can see, this house is pretty damaged and has some ongoing reconstruction right now, so I hope soon it's gonna be again bright, red and beautiful. Right across the street from the house, Cortés commissioned to build a church so his wife has a convenient place to pray. The Immaculate Conception Church, better known as La Conchita, is a bit mysterious. It's definitely one of the first churches in Mexico, if not the first. I can say for sure that this is the first church in Mexico City, because before Cortes came here, he was doing some developments in town of Puebla. So maybe there was a church built there earlier than here. I'm not sure. I found information online that there were archaeological discoveries of the remains of 150 people and there was a Toltec altar right beneath the central nave of this church. Later it was determined these people were deceased precisely as Tenochtitlan was in decline. So I don't understand how Cortes built a church on top of the indigenous people altar if he was in peace with them and they gave him land in their village. I'm not sure I understand this part. If I'm already talking about churches, I need to tell you about one of the most important historic buildings here, the parish of San Juan Batista. Built between 1520 and 1552 and is one of the oldest parish churches in Mexico City. Originally, this church and the cloister next to it were constructed as a monastery by Dominicans, but the complex was later transferred to the Franciscans. 
Over time, as the complex deteriorated and was reconstructed and restored various times, most of it was replaced. Now, the only original parts from the 16th century are the chore area, Rosario Chapel and the main altar. During much of the colonial period, the atrium functioned as a cemetery, but I didn't find confirmation of this information in other sources. Today, much of the atrium is now the Plaza de Centario, which was named in commemoration of the 100th anniversary of independence of Mexico. In 2005, the San Juan Batista Church underwent renovations to its tower, atrium, facade, portals, and much more under the supervision of the academics from UNAM. The video about UNAM campus I already have on my channel and I'm gonna link it somewhere here. So when you're done watching this video, you can watch that video if you haven't already. I think it was enough of historical excourse. Hope you didn't get bored here. Honestly, churches is not something I'm really interested in. So let's move to more modern time and talk about more exciting things here on the main square. This is Plaza Hidalgo, where you have this photo zone with the name of the neighborhood and nice kiosk behind it. Usually it gets very busy after the sunset. A lot of street vendors, performance, and people. A lot of people walking around and enjoying this plaza. Right now it seems like they have their like a COVID testing center, or maybe vaccine center. I'm not sure. They just recently closed the central part of this plaza. Right next to Plaza Hidalgo, there is Jardin Centario. It has much more shade, beautiful fountain with coyotes. This plaza is surrounded by the restaurants on all three sides around. So we have plenty of options to eat. I haven't tried all of them, but I've been a couple of times to Laka Laka and I can really recommend that place. They have a nice inner yard, or you also can ask them if they have an empty table on the terrace, which has a nice view over Jardin Centario. But Cuyacan has much more food options, and I'll try to show you some of the most interesting ones. There are three locations for the food, Cuyacan Market or Mercado de Cuyacan, and food tents on Aogayo Street or Ignacio Allende Street. Let's try some. That fountain behind me with coyotes is like on and off and on and off. I don't really get the schedule how it works. We are going to the main Coyoacan market, which is located like a couple of blocks from the main square Hidalgo where we've just been. And it's right across the street from Jardin Allende. Here is the market. Look at all those piñatas up here. This is really cool. And here is the king of piñatas. They also have some spiders up here that I'm not sure what they mean. So Coyacan Market is famous for its tostadas. And the thing that you need to look for should be with the yellow background where it says that they have original tostadas. But I'm looking around here. On this intersection, there is like five places that say that they are original tostadas and they all are the one. But I'm not really sure which one is the one. So I need to figure it out somehow. So after a quick research online, I realized that all four of them are like the one place. I asked locals, they confirmed. So we're good as long as you are sitting right at the intersection of those aisles here. I'm walking on the orthogonal streets north of the center of Coyoacan. Here you will find white streets, old parked cars, and unfortunately not a lot of shade. Coyoacan in general doesn't have high-rise buildings, mostly private houses, villas, some townhouses, maybe a couple of five-story apartment buildings. But it feels here like a separate town from Mexico City, so tranquil and quiet. Architecture is a mix of everything. You can find old colonial casas, modernist buildings with cool constructivism elements, and nowadays modern architecture here.
Here we are in the most famous house of whole Kuyokan, Blue House or Casa Azul, where Frida Kahlo lived. This is the house of her parents. She grew up here and also lived her adult life. Some period of time she lived here with her husband Diego Rivera. Even Leon Trotsky lived here with his wife when he arrived to Mexico seeking political asylum. So today Casa Azul is a museum and I don't recommend you visiting it. I know, you wouldn't expect me to say that, like why? This is the most famous house museum and everybody who visits Mexico City goes here. Yeah, but let me explain you why I don't recommend it. First little thing is it says welcome gringos is actually the ticket price. So for foreigners it's 270 pesos and for Mexicans it's 130 pesos. Yeah, not a big deal, just 15 bucks, come on dude. But isn't that discrimination based on nationality? Okay, next one. Tickets are for a specific time slot that you choose on the website when you buy them. So if you have morning tickets, it's not that bad, you're probably gonna be pretty much on time. And if you have the afternoon tickets, good luck. You might spend another hour or more in the line, even though you have a specific time stamp on your tickets. They really cannot organize it, and this museum exists for so many years. I heard complaints now that right now it is not possible to buy tickets for groups of visitors and it's a problem for tour groups as they cannot organize it. Next thing is that if you want to take pictures, you need to buy a permit, the separate permit for tickets. And they don't offer it online. They have a small ticket booth right inside behind the door when you enter on the right side. After a long time standing in line, they let you go in into another small light inside in the inner yard and you just go past the ticket booth. I got screamed by the staff for taking pictures without a permit that I didn't even know that I need. She told me you have to get out of the house, buy a permit, then get back on little line, and then get in the house. So, photography permit costs 30 passes. Yes, I was yelled at the museum for one and a half dollars. So please, buy a permit if you go there so you don't get yelled. <laughs> Listen, I'm not complaining. I'm just letting you know what might wait for you had there. I'm pretty sure most of the people had better experience than I did. But the real issue was the experience itself. The house is very nice. You go from room to room, there are a lot of details and things to look at. I read many articles about the house and the life there, and I wanted to find all of the elements from the personal collection of Frida and all the things that I read about. But <laughs> they literally have a sign inside with like a sign of little cloth and written something like, don't stand here, move fast, we have a lot of people. So they don't want you to look at things, appreciate them. They want to push you through the rooms as fast as possible, take your money and go to the next one. Just like, come in, come in guys, give us your money. You know, it's like the fast food of museums. And this is a shame because the house is really interesting and beautiful. So many details there. There are also even like Frida's ash there in pre-Columbian era own in one of the rooms. Like try to find it if you go there. Garden is amazing. I like the contrast of greenery and the blue color of the house. So as you see, my problem is not the house. House is very inspiring and gorgeous. The problem is the museum and how it's organized. They have no respect for visitors, unfortunately. Guys, you would not believe whom I just met here. That's Frida Kahlo herself. Buenas tardes. So she has a really beautiful house that again, I don't recommend going there. I just wish that she would just live there and that's it. No visitors. Okay, muchas gracias. Another house museum a couple of blocks away, which doesn't have any lines, is Leon Trotsky's house. It doesn't look attractive from the outside, as due to several attempts to kill him, they barricaded this house and had the gunman protecting him. It's still a nice house inside, and you can see his personal office, where he was killed with an ice axe by KGB agent who was sent by Stalin. This house definitely has its place in history, and if it sounds interesting to you, it might be worth visiting. On the other side from the road, this house actually looks a little bit more inviting than from the other side. 
Here inside you mostly have some pictures of Trotsky, also some stories and diagrams about his life in Mexico and his life and communist actions in general. Honestly, I'm not really interested in his life. Come on, he was a communist, he didn't do anything good. Look how many bad things USSR did. So I don't really even want to know about his life and what he did. So here I'm just in the garden. I mostly want to look here on the architecture, how the garden is located and the position to the house and all the other details I can notice here. understand this is his office where Trotsky was killed by KGB agent. What can I tell you? This museum also charges double for foreigners and they have another fee for photography permit. Jesus Christ. While walking these streets, I cannot not to mention names of the streets. All the parallel streets here have the names of European capitals. Like, check this out. Brussels, Madrid, Vienna, Berlin, London, Paris. Isn't that cool or what? But I really want to know why would they call them this way? Because these streets are pretty old. What they were called before that they had to change those names. Didn't find any info online. Maybe you know? Tell me in comments, please. If you take Vienna Street from Leon Trotsky house, you will end up in one of the corners of the big park Nivieros de Coyoacan. There is a small plants market on the corner and even if you're a tourist and you cannot buy a plant to take it home, you still can appreciate how amazing the plants are there, if you're a plant lover as I am, of course. The Park Viveros de Coyoacan is a weird one. It has a specific entrance on one side and exit on the other side, because of COVID, of course. So, it will be almost impossible just to walk through and to get into the park whenever you need and to get out of the park whenever you need because all those entrances and exits are closed. Anyway, I'll tell you that there is nothing to do and during the hot season there is a lot of dust as trails are not paved. It gets better during the rain season, but if you are here for one or two days exploring Cuyoacan, I would not recommend you to go into this park. Really nothing specific there. And the most exciting part the area we should get lost. I really like this part of Cuyoacan. Big trees give a lot of shade and some streets are even really dark. Be ready to walk on the cobblestone. Architecture here is predominantly old huge private mansions with high stone fences and some colonial architecture. There are a couple of nice little parks like this one where I am right now. So I just was walking down the street and I see this amazing house. I get into the through the main entrance. I'm not sure yet what it is, but it looks very, very beautiful. Let me figure it out and I'll let you know. So this is Casa de la Cultura. They have a very nice, beautiful inner yard, coffee place restaurant it's very quiet and chill here and it's not as hot because everything is in shade shame that i didn't know about this place but now i know and you know as well it seems like it's open inside this casa de la cultura and i can go upstairs and check out the house Calle Aguacate is a really cold, dark street. So good on a hot day. I'm enjoying it. And I'm getting lost here. Let's see what are the other little streets and side streets we can find in this area. A lot of these fences have volcanic rock and it looks black and it's even more black in the rain when it's wet. Really like this material, looks very nice.
I made it all the way to the border with another fascinating neighborhood, San Angel, but I'll tell you about it in the next video. Behind me there is a small chapel called the San Antonio Pantacola. There are legends about this chapel and who built it. One legend said the famous instigator of the event called the Sad Night when Spanish were conquering Aztec Empire built it. But the other legend said that local smugglers built the chapel to Antonio Panzaloca as they prayed to him not to be caught. Which one is true? I don't know. Also next to this church there is a small bridge. This bridge is a very old stone bridge over the Magdalena River. It was built in 1768. It was very important as it was a part of the royal road between the towns of San Angel and Coyoacan. If you ended up here as I did, I suggest to take back the Avenue Francisco Sosa to the historic center of Coyoacan and one more time enjoy this cozy part of neighborhood. The streets end up at the entrance to the Jardin Centario. It was raining a little bit when I was walking back to the historic center of Cuyahocan. And you know, I was just thinking that it seems like in this video it's like a tour where I keep saying where to go, which street to take. And you know, so far it really feels right to me. The last thing after a day of walking and exploring, we should have a good local food. And I'll show you the street food of Aguaya Street. Saying that's Aguaya Street and the street food is right here. So let's go. Oh, as you see here, we have a lot of food options. Tacos, elotes, what else is here? Tostas, crepas, churros, hamburguesas, hot cakes. I'm not sure what is this, some um, dessert. And my favorite meat that I used to eat a lot here. Let me show you. I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. That's supposed to be very good. Muchas gracias. That alota was really good. And for dessert here, there is only, only one option that you have to get. Churros. Just grab this, amigo. Churros. And that's it for today. So please comment me what was your favorite part in this video. Please like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to my channel to see the next video from Mexico City and all around the world because I'll be traveling soon and put the bell notifications to see the videos first. Thank you very much and to the next one.